Okay, one of the most important features with breastfeeding is to get the positioning and attachment right. If there's a good attachment from, from the very first feed, then it's, it means there will be less complications and generally the breastfeeding will be more successful. Marina's already demonstrated the different positions. Um, but the most important thing with positioning is, m mums, you need to know that you're going to be spending most of your time breastfeeding in the early weeks. So you need to make sure that you're nice and comfortable before you start. If you're feeding in a chair, make sure you ha you're sitting in a, in a comfortable chair. It's a good idea to get a little footstool, something that raises your feet up, to bring your knees up above the level of your hips. That helps to push your back into the chair. So it means that your back is well supported and you are nice and comfortable. It also encourages you to lift your baby up and get your baby into position and attached before you look for props like pillows. We're often obsessed about using breastfeeding pillows. Any pillow or cushion will do. The idea of a pillow is that it's there to support mums when they're actually holding babies so that it supports the mother's arms that's supporting the weight of the baby. So get the baby positioned well first and then get your pillow in and you can tuck it in whatever way you want to give support. Make sure that baby's nice and comfortable. So the baby's tummy is facing mummy's tummy and that the baby can suck and swallow nice and comfortably. Make sure that you have a drink beside you. You're going to be, feel thirsty, particularly in the early weeks. You need to be drinking at least two litres of water. So it's a good idea to have a sippy cup or a bottle that has a, a non-spill top on it um, so that if you do happen to accidentally hit it while you're feeding, it's not going to cause a big mess around the place. It's also a good time to remember that you need extra calories when you're breastfeeding. It's important that you have a little snack every time you sit down to feed. You're feeding round the clock 24-7, so there's no point in just relying on having your three meals a day. If your breakfast starts at 10 o'clock usually every day and you're up feeding from 4 o'clock in the morning, you actually need to think about what am I going to have at 4 o'clock in the morning because it's a long time till breakfast at 10 o'clock. So have your little snacks around you, be it in the bedroom or in the sitting room, wherever you set up your little area beforehand. So it's a reminder that every time baby feeds, you should eat something as well. Most mums will take in, on top of a normal balanced diet of about 2,000 calories, will have at least four to 500 calories extra when they're breastfeeding. And they're the calories that you actually need to allow you to comfortably provide um, the nutrition for your baby. So make sure you have your snack and that you're drinking on a regular basis. It's also a time where you can have the remote control for the television, you can have a book beside you, you could have your, your phone, you could be texting friends and relations. These are, every time you sit down to feed should be a relaxing time for you. So make sure that, um, that you get the most out of your time sitting with your baby. Um, the feeding patterns in the early days, on the first day, baby, will probably sleep, feed, sleep, feed, and by the end of the first day, you'll think, oh, I have the perfect baby, I haven't heard it cry yet. Um, but don't get lured into a false sense of um, security because babies are only recovering from the delivery the day in the first 24 hours, the same as you are. So they tend to be more tired and sleepy. And then all of a sudden they start to waken up. They come be, become more alert and realize that, oh, I'm not in the cozy, quiet little place I was yesterday. And this is a time where mommy's ready to sleep, the tiredness is starting to hit in and baby just wants to be awake and in mommy's arms cuddled because this is where baby feels most secure. And this is where babies tend to kick into what we call frequent or cluster feeding. And it's a period of time that can last for hours on end. Baby, wants to, baby has a feed, you go to settle the baby in the cot and the next you see the feeding cues, the baby's starting to show you want to feed. And mums will often say during this time, oh, the baby couldn't possibly be hungry, I'm only after feeding. But it's not necessarily due to hunger that baby is queuing to feed. This is a period where your breasts need extra stimulation. Your baby is a very clever little being and already has worked out that the more sucking the baby does at the breast, the quicker the baby will be rewarded because your body will respond to the constant sucking and start to produce milk. So it's actually important that your baby goes through this period of cluster feeding because it's going to encourage your hormones to get your body to start making milk. 
the more baby sucks at the breast, the quicker your prolactin, the hormone that's, that's going to work on the brain is released, the levels of prolactin rise, and that stimulates your breast to start producing milk. So the more sucking in the, the first two, three days, the quicker your body starts to respond and starts to feel heavier. And as your breasts change and they start to feel heavier, that's your body responding to say that it's now starting to make milk, to mil mix with the vital colostrum that was in your breasts um, from delivery. Your body actually starts producing colostrum from 16 weeks in, pre in, in pregnancy, right up until after baby is born, and will continue to produce colostrum mixed with your milk for at least the first three months. So it's very important, the more feeds baby gets, the quicker, the more colostrum and the milk that the baby gets. Generally, day, somewhere between day two and day five, your body will start producing more and more milk. So you'll feel the breast getting heavier. And as this happens, baby goes to the breast. If the baby is latching on well and taking, transferring the milk through the breast, then the baby will start to settle a little bit better between feeds and then baby will have a little sleep and then it'll become awake and alert and be ready to feed again. And this is one of the signs going forward. New mums will always ask, how am I going to know that my baby is getting enough milk? And the first thing you're going to know is if baby is awake and alert for a feed, your breast feels heavy before the feed, baby goes on, feeds for, for a relatively nice period of time, um, every feed will differ, some, some feeds will be longer than others, but a good indication that babies had a good feed is that your breast is actually going to feel soft, a lot softer than it was before baby started, and the only way the breast can get softer is if baby has transferred the milk out. Um, so that's a good indication, number one, your breast is going to feel softer after the feed, Baby will settle, sleep for a few hours, and then will wake and cue to feed again. Your breast will feel full again because your body has had time to replenish the milk stores that are there. So remember, in the few early days, it's your hormones that determine your milk supply. But once your body responds and starts making milk, it's baby taking the milk out of the breast on a regular basis that's going to allow your body to replace the milk and make more. So it's very important that you allow baby to feed responsibly. That means that baby feeds whenever the baby wants to feed. So we don't put a clock and say baby feeds at a certain time every day. It's whenever the baby is awake and wants to feed. The only time we would put restrictions on the feeds if we have a very sleepy baby in the early days or you know that things are not going as well as they should be. And that will go back to the attachment if the feed doesn't feel comfortable for you, it means the attachment is not good. If the attachment is not good, then baby's not transferring adequate milk out. So it all goes back to the step at the beginning. Make sure that the attachment is good. Remember, breastfeeding is not meant to hurt. When the baby latches on, as Marina said earlier, you should be feeling a nice tug. That's a nice pull, but it shouldn't be uncomfortable. Get used to looking at the shape of your nipple before you start the feed. When the baby feeds and comes away from the breast, the nipple should look the same nice rounded shape that it was beforehand. If you see a crease across the tip of the nipple or it looks a little bit pinched or maybe resembles the top of a new lipstick or, or the feed feels uncomfortable, that's an indication that the latch is not as good as it should. The baby just is such, sucking on the tip of the nipple. It's what we call a shallow latch. You need to take baby away from the breast by getting a clean finger and inserting it at the corner of the baby's mouth, breaking the suction and pulling the ba baby gently off the breast to break the latch. And then you try and reattach the baby, but waiting for a big wide open mouth, as Marina described earlier on, and get the baby back with a deeper latch. So if you can get more of the breast into the baby's mouth, you're aiming to get the nipple to go in that direction, up towards the back, the roof of the mouth. When the baby starts to suck, you should be able to feel the difference. It should feel more comfortable straight away. You'll also notice that when baby feeds, the breast is going to feel softer and more comfortable at the end of the feed because baby got a better transfer of milk. Okay, mum, so remember, when you're 
when your milk supply comes through be, sometime around between day three and day five after baby is born, at that stage you can anticipate you're going to be feeding your baby at least eight to 14 times in 24 hours. So that's at least every two to three hours. And that's, they will be short, they may be short feeds, but baby, if your breast is softening, you know baby is transferring the milk. Still, again, how are you going to know that baby's getting enough milk? The next thing you're going to do is you're going to look at the signs that your baby is trying to give you. The first, one you, first thing you're going to look at is the nappies. Babies on day one will have one or two wet and dirty nappies. The dirty nappies, the stools, are thick, black, tarry, green, dark green uh, meconium nappies. Not very pleasant and not very nice to clean. It's quite thick and sticky. But that is that meconium is in the bowel when baby is born. It's part of baby's birth weight. So babies st pass all this meconium out of their bowel within the first few days. The more colostrum the baby gets from frequent feeding, the quicker the meconium will be cleared out of the system because colostrum works as a laxative to help clear the meconium out. Um, but with that, that meconium is part of baby's birth weight. So you can anticipate if baby has loads of dirty nappies in the first two or three days, baby's weight is going to drop. Somewhere between 5 and 8% of baby's birth weight will probably be lost in the first couple of days. But that's normal weight loss for a healthy breastfeeding baby if the feeding is going well. Generally then, when the milk supply starts coming through, you're going to see the baby's wet nappies are going to increase because the baby's now taking in more fluids. The meconium will be cleared out of the baby's bowel, so the baby's stools are now going to change to more of a greeny brown colour. And as the week progresses and baby takes more and more milk from the breast, you're actually going to see the stools changing to more of a mustardy yellow colour. So by, by the end of the first week, you can anticipate that your baby is having at least six heavy wet nappies and you're not going to be wondering if the, the nappy is wet because you're actually going to feel the weight in the nappy. Um, just an interesting pointer when you're buying your nappies, some, some different nappies have a yellow stripe down the centre of them depending on the make of the nappies. This yellow stripe will actually change colour if the baby passes urine. So sometimes if, if you're a first time mum and you really haven't a clue about babies and changing nappies, if you have this stripe in the nappy and you see a change in colour, it's an indication that the baby has wet. Um, there would be no doubt if you actually peep in the side of the nappy whether the baby has passed um, a dirty nappy or not. But by the end of the first week, the baby should be having at least six or more heavy and wet nappies and at least three dirty nappies. And this pattern should continue then every day for at least the first six weeks. And it's one of the best indications that your baby is actually getting plenty of milk. Every single day, a baby should be having at least six wet and at least three dirty nappies from they are a week old right up until they're six weeks old. Anything less than that um, would, uh, would ask us to look at the feeding experience and see can we identify is everything all right because that's what baby should be having. This is just an, a little poster that shows the different coloured nappies. So here we have the meconium stained nappies at the very beginning on day one and then the stools start to change from day three to four and then the colour then as the week progresses okay now the colours after that the nappies if they're not not may not always be mustardy yellow sometimes if you have something to eat um, the colour if you have very leafy green um, cabbage or spinach, the stools may take on a little bit of a green consistency. They will vary on different days, but the most important thing is that babies should be having regular wet and dirty nappies. Okay, so as well as the wet and dirty nappies, you'll notice that your baby is starting to gain weight. Most babies will drop weight in the first few days and then as soon as the breasts start producing more milk and if the feeding is going well, the baby starts to put the weight it has lost back on. So all majority of babies will have regained their birth, birth weight, some of them within the first week, but most of them at least by the time uh, they're due their two week checkup. So generally the public health nurse, if she's calling out to the house and she does a weight, the 
you'll be able to check and see is there a difference from you went home from the hospital and just keep a check on the weight gain then after that um, most babies when they start to put on weight will put on somewhere between four and eight ounces a week or between 125 and 250 grams per week and that's steady weight gain that you can expect from your baby so you remember if your baby is having plenty of wet and dirty nappies they are steadily putting on weight you'll visibly actually start to feel baby getting heavier in your arms you'll notice that the baby's moving from maybe the newborn baby grows up to the naught to three months and then gradually you'll notice that something you put on two weeks ago is starting to get a little bit small for baby so your baby will progress as well as that you'll see a nice contented baby that's awake and alert for feeds and settles well after feeds now in the early weeks you can also anticipate that your baby is going to feed a lot around the clock babies don't know the difference between night and day and ironically for us ladies, our hormone levels tend to be higher during the night. So in the early weeks, babies tend to feed an awful lot more during the night sometimes than they do during the day. So if you have a baby that's up feeding a lot during the night and it tends to settle better and sleep better during the day, then pretend you're on night duty, the same as our, our, some of our midwives, and get your sleep during the day when baby is sleeping. But anticipate that in the early weeks, babies don't know any difference. So they will be feeding a lot at night and it's perfectly normal. Generally, a lot of mums will say that by the time baby gets to six or seven weeks, it's nearly like a little light switch goes off on their head and they realise, oh, there is a difference here between night and day and they may start to turn around. Um, but babies' brains are actually not programmed um, to sleep or to identify between night and day until they're over six months old. So that's just something to... to keep in mind when you're at home during the night and you think oh my goodness how am I going to cope with this remember you get your cat naps whenever you can best advice I can give you in the early weeks if the feeding is going well is to sleep whenever baby is sleeping try and rest in the early weeks because there's huge changes that your body has to go through um, and also that your hormones are going to go through in the weeks after you deliver your baby so very quickly in the early weeks after delivery your body is trying to get back to the way it was before you were pregnant and you have to allow time for that so it's a time to rest as much as you can and just concentrate on getting to know your baby's ways and remember that you're going to be feeding very often.